Hi guys, it's me here and today I wanted to share with you a bit of a meme build. I was not going to make a video about this one, but a lot of people have been asking for how I'm uh, building this Flicker Strike Trickster, which is based around the Soul Thirst belt. So I'm going to share this video with you just to showcase the character, explain how the character is made. And then most importantly, I think I need to give a disclaimer and say who this build is good for and who should not be probably playing this build. So let's start with that. Who is this build good for? This build is good for someone who has like spare, let's say to have a good time, like 20 to 30 X to uh, get this build off the ground, to be able to like farm T6 maps very very quickly uh, then you definitely need to have some other character that will be able to kill your bosses like different uh, end game bosses doing your mavens cyruses uh, conquerors eater uh, searing exarch all of that stuff this character is not well suited for because this is just a speed mapper uh, that is basically made for that thing so if you don't have a character that will clear your bosses to progress your atlas and things like that uh, this is definitely not a character for for you but if you're looking for an extra character that you can put a little bit of currency into and just have fun and blast through maps extremely quickly uh, and have this build be like you know like half the price of a headhunter and still feel like it's actually faster than a headhunter character uh, that's definitely something that i would recommend so Let's talk about what this build is based on, and that is the Soul Thirst belt, which gives you Soul Eater, which basically means every single stack, like you kill a monster, you get 5% attack speed and cast speed increase, uh, and that stacks as much as you want, as long as you have your flasks active. Uh, with the setup that I currently have, my flasks last almost two minutes it's like one minute maybe like 45 seconds or something like that uh, because it's hard to calculate due to the solstice vigil uptime uh, but the base duration of my flasks is like uh, one minute 20 seconds they're not even uh, i don't even have all the passives picked yet i don't have a 30 percent quality on the flasks yet so they can still get even longer like 130 um, and then Solstice Vigil increases, um, it basically slows down the effects of uh, things uh, on uh, effects of buffs and debuffs that you have on you uh, by 20%, which basically actually means it, be it becomes like 25% longer, so like one fourth. So if, uh, if it lasts, let's say, if you could uh, get like 100 seconds of uh, flask uptime, then you're gonna get like. Um, 125 seconds i think or 120 seconds one of those basically it increases the duration of all the buffs on you the solstice vigil so uh, we're using very long duration flasks the longest duration flask that you can use is going to be bismuth flask which is base 8.5 seconds and then we have sapphire topaz ruby and stibnite all of which are eight second base duration we are rolling them with 40 percent increased duration uh, 40 percent increased duration is a mod that you need uh, item level 84 for uh, and then we also are using uh, these, what are they called? Uh, we've got um, Enkindling Orbs, yes, they're Enkindling Orbs, and we are putting Enkindling Orbs to get the increased duration, which goes up to 100%. Uh, other than that, we're stacking the duration of the flasks with cluster jewels. So I have small cluster jewels here that are six passives, 35% uh, increase effect of small passives and distilled perfection. This is the best cluster jewel you can possibly get for that. Uh, you will be just fine if you simply get a medium cluster jewel with increased flask effect duration uh, base that has distilled perfection rolled on it. Just pick as many passives as you want and you're going to be totally fine. And then we're also picking a little bit of flask duration on the skill tree here, as well as druidic right anointment that gives us extra 20%. So we're stacking four of these medium cluster jewels um, and I don't even have all the passives picked. And then on top of that, we're also picking uh, this unique jewel called survival instincts, which increases flask effect duration by 50%. So that is extra 50% to our flask effect duration the downside of reduced flask charges gained doesn't matter because we finished the map before we would need to use the flasks even second time and then we also after that could use them even uh, you know third time if we had like extra charges but you will clear your maps with one use max two uses and you have that on almost all of your flasks only the step knight has one use uh, but it doesn't really matter that much uh, other than that, uh, of course, we're using Flicker Strike, and the reason why I'm playing Trickster is because we're picking with the Arcane, which makes the Flicker Strike cost free, it makes the Leap Slam cost free, and everything else that I want to cast, like for example, I got Mark on hit here, the, the Mark would cost some mana, but I simply put Life Tap with it, so we got Assassin's Mark uh, with... Um, mark on hit 
with a lifetop support so that I can trigger that without any worries. Um, so again, we we basically have zero mana. I can reserve 100% of my mana and I can cast 100 attacks per second and it doesn't matter because I'm simply able to attack as fast as I want without any mana limitations, which frees up a lot of uh, prefixes on jewelry. It frees up suffix on a flask. It frees up also um, a jewel socket, which I can put some jewel with like corrupted blood immunity into right now. Uh, and it frees up uh, all, the, all the things like watcher's eye slot, for example. Uh, I have a watcher's eye with corruption, physical damage converted to cold damage while affected by hatred. But normally I would also have to have uh, minus to mana cost while affected by clarity. Um, and all of those things are very annoying to get and they'll uh, you have to spend a lot of resources to do that. But Trickster basically completely bypasses that and the cost is free. Um, so that's why we are playing Trickster, that's the main reason behind it. And besides that, this is a speed mapper, we're supposed to be clearing maps, killing monsters all the time, and Trickster is one of the best ascendancies at that, because you get the attack speed, cast speed, you get the recovery on kill, you get the frenzy and power charges on kill, which is basically amazing for any kind of a build that wants to focus on clearing the maps. Trickster is a very good ascendancy if you want to focus solely on maps, or if you want to be doing bossing, ideally you'd like to use some kind of a channeling skill. But people uh, really disregard Trickster as this horrible ascendancy because they look at, at Trickster having a, a one bad node. Like there's this bad node, ha hard stopper, that are, they're like, oh my god, this is a pendulum effect, pendulum effects are bad, why is it here? Terrible ascendancy. No, this is a great ascendancy. It has a very, very strong passives, a lot of different strong passives. It's uh, It has great uh, passives for chaos skills, so like ED contagion, stuff like that. It is very tanky while mapping. Uh, it is very comfortable while, while mapping because even as a caster, you get tons of attack speed. Uh, it's very easy to gain the charges while mapping. It's a great mapping ascendancy. So if you're making a build that is specific for that reason, and then Trickster is a really good ascendancy for that for many different types of builds. So, uh, we're using Flicker Strike. Uh, Flicker Strike is in here with Awakened Cold Penetration. That gives me exposure. Uh, Flicker Strike added cold damage. Probably I could replace it with something else by now. Uh, elemental uh, damage with attack skills. Ancestral Call and Multi Strike. Multi Strike basically means so that I, uh, I press it once, I attack three times, and I have three chances at gaining Frenzy Charges, but I spend only one Frenzy Charge in order to execute that attack if uh, my Flicker Strike is on cooldown. Uh, the way we're generating Frenzy Charges other than on kill, which we have like tons of uh, Frenzy Charge on kill from just playing Trickster, uh, I am using a chest piece that has 10% chance to gain Frenzy Charge on hit. I am also using Flicker Strike with max quality, which is giving me 20, so that's 30%. Then we also have a 10% chance to gain Frenzy Charge on hit uh, when you hit a marked enemy. Uh, and then we also have just like 40%, right? And then we've got 8% uh, here from the Sword Mastery that gives me 8% uh, chance to gain Frenzy Charges when you hit a unique enemy. So that's like 48 times 3, that's like 146 or something, uh, like huge amount of... Um, a huge amount of chances to gain, gain Frenzy Charges. But even despite that, because we are attacking at such an insane rate, you are going to sometimes run out of Frenzy Charges on single target, but all you need to do is just gently tap your um, Leap Slam and you're gonna attack a hundred times with Leap Slam and gain max Frenzy Charges and you just continue flickering. So it's not an issue at all. Even if we had less Frenzy Charge generation, it would be fine. The higher you stack your Frenzy Charges, if you get like extra Frenzy Charges on gloves, you can get like plus two on gloves, you can get plus one on the two-handed sword as well, uh, you can get plus on the rings, uh, you can get plus on the boots if you run with different boots, uh, but I went with like ailment immunity, um, you can get more frenzy charges and then that is going to be much less likely to happen, that you would run out of charges, because it's basically RNG, um, And uh, but we because we attack so fast, the cooldown almost doesn't really matter, even though it's the cooldown is two seconds, but we're gonna attack like 300 times in those two seconds, so sometimes you can run out of charges anyway because there is enough variance in there where you can run out of fr frenzy charges but then just tap leap slam and you have your back to full frenzy charges and you continue um in terms of the gear the most important thing and the biggest cost of the build is definitely going to be um cluster jewels although you can do this on a very low budget uh, Watcher's Eye is going to be uh, definitely a part of the cost so Watcher's Eye with just the Fizz Convert is going to cost you 
okay, it costs like one exalted orb, I think, right now. So that's going to cost like one X. And then the flasks are going to be the most expensive things. You can get away with using uh, either Void Forge or Star Forge, the one that deals elemental damage and allows your elemental damage to shock. You can use that weapon for sure. It's going to work definitely very well uh, to get started with. And you can do T16 maps on it, no problem. Um, and then just the rest of the gear that I have is mainly like um, life, spell suppression, I don't need that many resistances, so I invested in some Chaos Res because resistances are being covered by my flasks since I'm running the Ruby, Topaz, Sapphire and Bismuth flask. Um, the suffixes on these flasks I have uh, min-maxed quite well uh, because I actually have the increased crit chance, reduced curse effect on me, a chance to avoid being stunned, which with that flask app I have 100% chance to avoid being stunned. I think I have like chance to avoid chance to being, yeah, 27% on a jewel here, then I have 24% uh, uh, on a chest, 50% in here, so we are 100% chance to avoid being stunned, because being stunned is the worst thing that can happen to you, because all of your recovery relies on attacking. So we've got life gain on hit, this is 5 and this is 10, just picking these nodes you get 15% li 15 life gain on hit, which is a massive amount, and that amount of life gain on hit is gonna keep you up against anything that doesn't one-shot you. Um, so we get a massive amount of recovery, uh, but we need to make sure that we don't get uh, stunned or frozen. That's why I have 100% ailment immunity. Uh, we get we get 100% uh, uh, stun avoidance, ignite, uh, chill, freeze, shock, all of that. We also have 100% spell suppression. I also have some endurance charges because I'm running uh, enduring composure, and then I'm also running cast when damage taken, immortal call with increased duration. The same tech I'm running on my other trickster build. It's a very very good. Um, it's a very, very good setup to be defensive. And that's basically the build. Um, we're just running Solstice Vigil, then Mark of the Elder with a Shaper Ring, so that we can have, this is like 91% increased attack damage, plus tons of uh, cold damage and the Tentacle Wave, so the clear is really, really nice. I'm going to leave you with uh, some footage uh, of this uh, character blasting through maps. Uh, and these are all like T16 maps, Alk can go basically. Uh, actually, sextants are very nice to put on with extra monsters and extra density. Uh, I am currently running the uh, grand design uh, node, uh, the keystone on the Atlas passive skill tree, which gives me extra pack size, which increases the number of monsters, which gives me more juice and just more stacks, and my character becomes faster and faster. And the cool thing is, since I don't have any mana cost limitations, I can just blast as fast as I want. So it's a very, very fun character, extremely fast character, uh, and, and I definitely really enjoyed it. Uh, so few things to get out of the way before I finish this video and wrap it up. Uh, please do not ask me if you can use Mage Blood with this build. Please do not ask me, can this build do X type of content? Because if you have to ask that question, that means the answer for you is no, pretty much. Because that means if, if you have to ask, like, can this build do certain type of content? That means you haven't understood how uh, the belt works, right? The belt, which is this whole build is based around, works in a way where you're killing enemies and then for 1 minute and 30 seconds, so you kill some enemies, and then let's say in, th in 30 seconds of killing enemies, then you're going to have an extra 1 minute of being insanely powerful. Once the time runs out, you hit like a wet noodle. You cannot kill anything, right? The bosses are going to be very, very hard to kill. And plus, like without flasks and flask charges, your character is going to have like negative resistances because that's what it relies on for the resistances. So, no, you cannot use Mage Blood because that's completely just removing the build and you're going to be playing a different build that just let's just look up a flicker strike guide this is not a generic flicker strike guide um and then uh, also you probably cannot do any content that you that is not like maps if you don't understand how this works the content that you can actually get away with doing is any type of content where you can clear a map and then kill a boss right so like for example uh if you have um synthesis maps that don't have uh, phases on the last boss so everything except for cortex you can clear that right because you clear them up you gain the stacks and then let's say you have like 30 seconds of your stacks left you have like 500 to a thousand stacks and then you go into the boss and you kill it in three seconds yeah sure you can do that right same with conquerors for example uh, same with shaper guardians 
Elder Guardians, on the other hand, they have phases. And during those phases, your flask charges are probably going to run out. You're going to lose your buffs and then you're going to get clapped. So Elder Guardians, for example, you cannot do. But Conquerors, you can one-shot, right? So it's all about the duration of the flasks and whether you can keep that up. Simulacrums are going to be extremely hard to get started in the later waves. You probably can do the early waves. Um, I remember when I was playing uh, Soul Thirst Champion Toxic Rain, uh, I remember there were there were times where I could just destroy like wave 25 courses in three seconds because I was just blasting hundreds and hundreds of projectiles per second. But then if I didn't have those stacks, then I couldn't kill it. Um, so it's like just a very risky thing that you shouldn't be doing. This is just mainly for speed mapping and that's what it excels at and that's what it's pretty much unmatched for because I can't think of a build that would be actually faster than that uh, because the amount of speed you're getting is absolutely ridiculous, right? And the cool thing about it is you can get started with a really low budget, right? You can get started with like 2x weapon, like 2-3x for the cluster jewels, uh, like 2-3x for the flasks, uh, and uh, then basically just basic spell suppression gear like Mark of the Shaper costs like 10 chaos, Solstice Vigil costs like 30, 40 chaos, uh, so it's not going to be that expensive to get started. So I would say like 20, 30 eggs and you can get this off the ground very easily. And then if you want to invest more into that, you can make this into a complete monster. Uh, but again, it's just going to be kind of an exercise in fun and speed clearing maps for fun. That's basically what the build is for. Uh, and that's what the build is really really good at but that's pretty much it so that's just it i wanted to share this build uh, with those people who want to uh, copy this and have some fun with flicker trickster thank you so much guys for watching and see you next time